Oh joy, at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And notice is in the presence of God that there's fullness of joy. And, and so, you know, we must be very present in his presence. You know, the new term, mindfulness, right? And just be very mindful of where you are at this time. Because after all, all we have is no. All we have is right now. And we're not promised a few minutes from now or yet tomorrow. But we have no. And uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's a challenge for all of us. You know, every day that we get up, that we should be able to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be very glad in it. Already I've been blessed. Praise and worship. Dancer, Tony and um, the testimony missions is Joan, right? Yeah, Joan. No? Um, thank you so much, just uh, Sister Marsha and, and every one of us. Uh, anybody feel blessed already? No, it's true. And, and, so, and, and so as we continue to invite the presence of God, I think it's, it is a privilege and an honor for us to be here in God's house. I really want to thank the, the pastors here, Pastor Michael Makanoff jones and Pastor Bruce and Dr. Royal and Gary and um, Harry and the, the leaders and the families and brothers and sisters, just so much that you have welcomed me in, in your space. And I'm very honored and privileged to be here with you all. Um, my, my, my friend Jeffrey from, from Marvel Gospel Hall, first time visitor, is here. So happy that Jeffrey, you could, you could be here as well. Uh, I was just reflecting while we're singing the songs, you know, I surrender all. And I just remember, it's like 51 years ago, that was my song. 51 years ago, I remember walking up the aisles. And that song, all to Jesus, I surrender. I was just this little barefoot boy in Cedar Valley, St. Thomas. And I couldn't believe it that Jesus would want me. Like he would actually want me to partner with him. Like I could give my life to him and my life will never be the same. And, and I remember walking up the aisles and tears came down my eyes because I recognized that I was surrendering to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creator of heaven and earth. And that nobody else, no one else could be of that significance like Jesus Christ. No one else. And, and one of the verses of scripture that still lives with me is St. Matthew 6 verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If we would just seek God first. If we would just be reminded always to seek God first. And, and you know, God, God is not so much concerned what you seek second and, and third and fourth. So suppose you want to seek the wife and the husband, you know, second and the money afterwards and the child and the career. But he just said, seek me first. And all the other things will, will line up a reminder that God wants us to prioritize him. Rooted in love, suited for battle. And I'd like us to just read from Ephesians 4, 1 to 6 as I read um, New International Version. Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father over all, who is over all and through all and in all. The, the leaders of this church, this great church, 
would want to remind all of us that as a church community, we should appreciate that loving, godly relationships are crucial for victory over the devil and for God to be glorified among and through us. The leaders of this church strongly believe that loving, godly relationships are crucial for victory over the devil and that if we would have those loving, godly relationships, then God will be glorified among and through us. That's, that's a powerful statement. You know, sometimes when you think of victory, you think of powerful themes like faith. And faith is amazing. The Bible tells us it is impossible to please God without faith. For those who come to him must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Right? Hebrews 11 verse 6. So that's very important. And, and, and faith is, is just believing in God that, that he's able to do the things that we cannot do. That God is able to keep us. I like what Philippians 1 verse 6 says. Being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That, that God who starts the work in you and I is watching over it to make sure it happens. One of the greatest revelations I've received in my 51 years as a Christian is this. I am the only one that can prevent my purpose on planet earth. And let me say it again. I came to the revelation that I am the only person on planet earth that can prevent God's purpose from working through me. And you say, why, why do I say that? Because first of all, God is committed to making sure that I do his will according to his will. It is God's will that we know his will and that we do it. Romans 12, 1 and 2, right? Don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know the perfect, acceptable will of God. So God now says, you know, Kevin, I, you, I have all the resources that you will ever need to walk in purpose. I used to complain, you know, I used to say, because I don't know my father, you know, and, and the father wound, and why is it that I could know my father? Then I said, why is it that my mother wasn't there, that she had to go and work and leave me with grandma? And I used to complain, why is it that I was born in Cedar Valley? Why I couldn't born in some nice posh place, you know, man? Why is it that I never go to this name brand school? Why is it, and I used to complain so much, I complain about politics, I complain about the weather, I complain about no money, I, until God says, stop the complaining, I am your father. Why are you complaining when I am here for you if you would just surrender to me and understand that I love you as is, where is, and I am watching over you so that you walk in purpose. Boy, stop complaining. Sometimes God talked to us a bit harsh, but I, I heard him and I stopped complaining because I realized that the devil could not stop me from walking in purpose because the word of God says, submit to God, then you can resist the devil. Some of us trying to resist the devil, but we're not submitting. The devil is going to mash you up, you know. No man, seriously, you have to first submit to God. Then he fills you with his Holy Spirit. You, you, are in, you are in the word, you are in the fellowship and the community, and you are in obedience to him. You, the devil is going to flee. You, you know why you, are, you and I are alive today, and Michael Jackson is dead, and Bob Marley is dead? Because you and I still have purpose. And God still wants us, us to, to grow and, and to be filled in his love and to do his work. And I realized that the attractions of the world are, are there and certain distractions. But the Bible says, this is how you deal with it. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. All of this is passing away. But those who do the will of God will endure it forever. You deal with the world by not loving the world. Neither the things of the world. And then you said, oh my gosh, the devil, the world, and the flesh... The flesh is with us 
It's not like I can say, excuse me, and I am not here. I'm present with me. I go to bed with me. I get up with me. I come to everything. I stand in the line with me. I drive on the road with the taxis and the other drivers with me. And I have to live with me. And the Bible says, look here, that you must put your members, sacrifice your members. Be a sacrifice. Deal with the flesh because it's going to be with you. And that, that can be a hard one. You know, in the church, there are some people that they are just hard to love. Not in this church, sorry. I mean, other churches I'm talking about. There are just some people that I have found out that sometimes it's hard to love them. There are other people, it's just nice to love them. It's like I just see them and I just love them. But there are some people I have found out over the years, it's hard to love them. And still God is saying that I should love them. How, how do I do that? Well, just a few thoughts. Rooted in love. What, why? First of all, God is love. Reminder, First John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Listen to what John is saying. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. So even if we think we know God, the apostle is saying, you don't know God if you don't love, because God is love. It's not so easy. Not so easy, you know. I, I was a teenager, and I was Christian, water baptized, Holy Ghost filled, Jesus on my mind, running for the prize. And I got up, and I hated my mother. I had moved now. I got my visa and came to Kingston, passport and visa, right? <laughs> so I'm now living in half of you with my mother. By this time, she's married. I have different family, children in that, in that um, new unit, and I come in. It was, it was just difficult because for 17 years, years old, I, I mean, I grew up with my grandmother. I love my grandmother, but no. I just got up and I realized, my gosh, this woman is a stranger to me. And then I just felt that she just prioritized everybody else apart from me. And I felt an outsider. And I got up and I hated her. And I go to the Lord and I said, Lord, please help me to love my mother. And the next morning, I still hated her. And then I pray again and I say, God, open my heart and help me to love my mother. Because as a child of God, I'm supposed to love her. Brothers and sisters, I get up and I still hate her. I was frustrated and I didn't know what to do. And I, so I decided to have a conversation with God. And I said, God, you know, say, I really want to love this woman, you know. But I blame her for the absence of my father. And I blame her for not being in my life, etc., etc. And I would like to love her. And the Spirit said to me, I didn't say you should feel like you love her. I said, you should love her. And then I said, I said, whoa. He says, this is it. You don't have to feel like you love her. But I want you to do the action as if you love her. So when I got up the next morning, I said, good morning, mommy. She said, good morning, son. Good morning. At the first, maybe I said, good morning. Never realized that, you know. Then it came out of my mouth. Is there anything I can help you with? She said, sure, wash the dishes, you know, and, and I'm washing dishes. And as the days go by, we're having conversation. And she's telling me how oh, her husband is cheating on her and no money coming in the house and the frustration she's going through. After a few months, I got up one day and I loved my mother. Brothers and sisters, there are some things in the community, if you wait on the feeling to love somebody, it's not going to happen. No, it's like loving your enemy. Really? You wait on a feeling to love your enemy? No, the enemy will plan to kill you and talk lie upon you and take away your promotion. No, you talk about the enemy where... Just, you're just disgusted by them behavior, etc. You can't wait for a feeling to love an enemy. You just have to love an enemy. You have to decide that because you belong to God, you are choosing God's way. Because he's love, you are doing the action. And you said, good morning. Eni no, don't say enemy. Say, tell them the name, right? Good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning. And then, you know, you, you, you can say, what, lovely dress, you know, and um, all the very best. You know, you start off, you know, you know, 
Little by little. And incrementally, because you give the Holy Spirit something to work with. Brothers and sisters, in the community, you have to give the Holy Spirit something to work with. It is your sacrifice. It is your discipline. It is your good habits. It is you changing. It, you know, I was asking some leaders, you know, in other places, what percentage of the church you would say grow? That over the three years or four years, they have grown to become more like Jesus. And most of them say probably about 20% or 25%. They're saying that, no, honestly, it's really about 25% if I was to look at the church in my congregation, that these members have grown. And, 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 and they say they, they, they look at it, and they, they look at the fruit of the Spirit, for instance. The love, the joy, the peace, the gentleness, the meekness, the self-control, the long-suffering, all of that. And they says, no, it's true. And, and, and you have heard of the 80-20 rule, right? The 20% of the people in the organization and the church to do 80% of the work. So what about the other 80%? When, 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 when God has something for us to do, and the only way we're going to walk in purpose is when we're obedient to God. And that's not, that's not easy. But So God is love. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13 says, love is the greatest. Paul says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Remember, faith is a big thing, you know, because it is impossible to please God without faith. Now, if it is impossible to please God without faith, and love is still greater, then it's more impossible, 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 impossible to please God without love. No, I am not saying because love is really the greatest, and hope, if you are hopeless, you get discouraged. You get depressed. You can't bother. Yeah, you, 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 you just feel like you can't just give up. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Sometimes life can be so difficult. Like, why is life so difficult? Sometimes I wonder. No, why is life so hard? It's like sometimes life wants to kick you down. And while you're down, it's like him just want to kill you. But it's true, Satan comes to steal to kill and to destroy. The good news is that Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. Jesus comes and he is the solution, but he says, you have to do it my way, which is the love way. So, you know, the, the, the educated people, you know, brilliant people, one day they were having a conversation with Jesus, according to St. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. And they said, to Jesus, you know, some of the lawyers and doctors, you know, like Philippo and so forth, they were saying to Jesus, Jesus, tell us, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus says, listen, massive and cruel, listen up, this is it. You know, as if he was a Jamaican, right? He says, you have to listen. He says, this is it. You must love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your being, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let me tell you, I just believe that this revelation, this word, really can help us to align in the important relationships according to Jesus' template. First of all, you must love God with everything that you have. And if you love God, you will be obedient to God. So, so Jesus would say, why you call me master and Lord when you're not obeying me? He, he says, That's, that, that can't work. You, you, if, you, if you say you love me because I love you and you say me give you myself. I died for you on the cross. And I give you everything that I have. So I want you to love me in return. Brothers and sisters, that's a choice. Love is a choice. Amen. We have to decide that we are going to love God because there are other things that are vying for the love. Yeah, there are other things that would say, why well, you don't love me? first. And, and, and Jesus is saying, the greatest commandment, love God with all your heart, your soul, your being, then love your neighbor as you love yourself. And my understanding is that the second greatest love, after we decide, God's love is first, and there's no love as great as God, but he expects us to love him in return, because there are people who are going to go into eternal damnation, not because God didn't love them, you know, but because they didn't love God. They just never choose God. 
This is the condemnation of the world, that light has come into the world, but men prefer darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. There are men and women who have decided, God, I want nothing to do with you. And God said, okay, respect, but you know the consequences. Yeah, because he's God, you can't change that. And the thing is, if you don't love God, or oh, you want to go in a theme heaven. No, that don't make no sense. You know, no. <laughs> a God heaven, a God kingdom, a God thing that. And you don't have nothing to do with him, and then you want to go in a theme place. No, man, that don't make no sense. So, but the second, the second love there is, is loving yourself. Because you love your neighbor as you love yourself. The assumption is, brothers and sisters, before you can love others in a healthy way, guess who you have to love? Yourself. And that is hard. That is hard. When we are coming from some places, adverse childhood experiences, when them cuss we, you're black like, you're red like, you're fat like, you're maga like, you're ugly like, your head big, your nose big, God have mercy by the time they finish with me. Thank you, Jesus, that we are alive. No, man, by the time and who them physically abuse and sexually abuse and all the rejection and all that kind of thing. And, 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 and then we're coming from slavery and colonialism. And remember, when we were what? Two-thirds of a human being. And, and all of that we have to deal with because it lodged in our mind, our cognition. And we don't believe that we are loved. We don't believe we are lovable. You know, I, 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 I had problems loving myself. I have shared with you. Never like my nose. Because I just thought, God just put the nose on the face. Boop. And I'm, I'm just wondering, what kind of nose is this? You know? And I'm in high school, and, and I wonder, I used to wonder, you know, in high school, I wonder if I could all get a nice girl with this nose. And I wonder if I could all have a career, you know, like, like I, I go to work properly clean and get all pay with this nose. And, 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 and it's amazing because God, God showed me that he knows my nose. <laughs> he knows my nose. And it's okay. Yeah, the bigger the nose, more oxygen to breathe. <laughs> by, by, by the way, you, 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 did you know that there are four different types of noses <laughs> yeah. no, you didn't know that you know no, my, the, <laughs> the research is telling me you know that, that there, there's a nose like mine right that's, that's one and there's like Andre Davis's nose that's, that's another nose then you know there's Jason Downer nose <laughs> no that's a joke though but I'm, I'm gonna tell you though that, that, that and I'm gonna talk about the, the nose but it's a different kind of nose but after you get to agree with God, brothers and sisters, you have to agree with God. Since God loves you and think and believe that you are lovable, why you don't agree with God that you are lovable? Why would you disobey God when he's telling you that, that you are created in my image? Why is it that you listen to other people that tell you that you are not loved? That you are not beautiful enough? That you're not powerful enough. Why you disagree with God? Why you don't agree with God that he loves you and that you are lovable? So I just decided I'm going to agree with God. I am loved. I am valuable. I am capable. I am forgivable. I am enough. And, and it's done. I just want to agree with God. Since God says it, and is in scripture that, I believe that. If you ever do that, it change your life. It, it really change your life. You don't have to be that anxious again and fearful. You don't have to compare yourself with other people. Because you know that God loves you as is where he is. And he has a work for you as well. And Jesus says when you do that, you can love other people. You can love others in a very healthy way. So love God, love self, love others. Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, and we're just going to go through these quickly. I call it the five C's, and I mentioned one already. That I believe that we can, as a community, be grounded in love so we overcome the enemy. We are suited for battle. The first one is that love is a choice. Choose to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received, according to Ephesians 4 verse 1. Love is the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. A quote by Dr. Scott Peck. One of my favorite authors, psychiatrist turned Christian. He says, love is 
the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another spiritual growth. Because it is an act of the will. You have to choose to love your brothers and sisters when they disappoint you. I had a good brother in the church and he said he was in hard times and he borrowed some money from me. That was a long time, years ago. It was $19,000. $19,000 was a lot of money them days there. And he said he would pay me back. And it just so happened after six months, he forgot. And then when I go to him, he said, you like him, I say, then you remember that? No, no, no. <laughs> no, he must said to me like, Oh, you remember that? Mr. Bridgman, oh, you mean if you remember that? And 19,000 of my money, millennial, and you promised to pay me back. Ah, no. Him not pay back. And you have to just release that. And so after that, now I've learned some things. When other brothers and sisters come to borrow money, if them say they want 12,000, me say, me can give you four. I go give this, nobody give me back, you know. Do not give me back. I give me, I give me. cannot lend you that, but I go give you this. Problem solved. And I tell you no lie. Because I can't believe that people in a church would borrow money and forget. Brothers and sisters, if you borrow the people their money, can you go and pay them back? And if you can't pay them back, then talk to them. Then say, me in a hardship. Yeah, man, is them things that is a choice that. And is your integrity, is your building of your character, is Christ like that you honor your commitments. You can find yourself in a hardship, you know, but you just call your brother and sister and say, you know, I said, me to promise you, but so and so and so and so. Oh, we can work it out. And you're a person of, of character. So the only way to love some people is that we have to choose to love them. And, and this is the nose I want to talk about. There's this Arabian proverbs. It says, he who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. Shun him. He who knows not and knows that he knows not is a student. Teach him. He who knows and knows not that he knows he is asleep. Wake him. And he who knows and knows that he knows he is wise. Follow him. Those are the four noses. Right? First of all, in the community, you're going to have some people who know not. And them don't know that them don't know. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, I was in all of those categories. There was a time I didn't know, and I didn't know that I didn't know. Here I was in high school, and my maths teacher, she didn't like the boys, the man. She said, all of you guys over there, who are not going to be fishermen. And all you girls going to be managers and bankers and this and doctors and teachers and all of that. All of them going to be nice and so. And me at the boy at the back, and me say, all right, to my friend, me say, watch me and she. Me not do fair homework at all. I said to my friend, I said, no man, watch how me go punish her. Me not, me say, me not do no assignment for her. Brothers and sisters, I feel the mat so till. I know I'm doing maths. <laughs> because I never knew that you don't have to like somebody to learn from them. I didn't know that, brothers and sisters, there are some persons based on their personality and how they behave. It's like you don't know, like what them do. But you still can learn from them. And then the Bible challenges us further to love them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very challenging. So, so, so one, in, in the community, there are some people they don't know, and they don't know that they don't know. And then there are some people, they don't know, but they know that they don't know. These are teachable people, you know. The leaders say, I love them people, them, man. I love them. Them don't know, and them, them know, so them don't know, so them say, teach me. And them listen well, and them try and understand, and them just like, grow, because they are teachable. Then there's another person, them know the thing, you know. But them don't know, so them know it. Them fast asleep. There are people in the church who are asleep. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah, man, you have to wake them up. Because them know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. They know that there's no other life but Jesus. They know all of these things and still them sleeping. 
and you have to wake them up. Yeah, because them, them, them not bad people, but them fast asleep. And you have to wake them. And then there are other people now, they know it. And they know that they know. And they are wise. And you want to be able to follow the wisdom that they are going to give you. So those are the four noses. Love should be communicated in a way that benefits the other person. In verse 2, it says, be completely humble, gentle, be patient. When, when we communicate love, we, we should do it in a way that benefits our brothers and our sisters. Not, not tear them down, but, but benefit them. And the apostle says, we must be completely humble and gentle and be patient with them in our communication. Somebody says, oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. And, and, and do you know the proud can always detect pride in others? No, no, it's true, man. <laughs> the proud people can always tell the other who oh, proud, you know. But, but it's a blind spot. It's like we can't see. Say, are we are the one. You remember David? When, they, when, when, when the prophet tell him, say, you know, all, all this big, powerful man and rich man have whole heap of sheep and then this farmer does have one sheep. And, and, and then things are happening, and him just send for the man's sheep and kill that and curry it. And serve it. And David, yeah, curry mutton. And, and, and David said, How would you do that? Hey, you saw the man, that wicked man there? Eh? Bring him come, let me deal with him, case. And the prophet said, Are you, you know? Are you, David? Are you? It's sure that we all have blind spots, you know. And I like David's attitude, him say, Have mercy upon me, O oh God. According to your loving kindness and your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. For against you have I sinned and done evil in your sight. In own it up, in own it. Brothers and sisters, if we're wrong, just own it up. Just own it. And then we may have to apologize to somebody. And we say, I'm so sorry. Because now you are, you, are, you are awakened. You get a revelation that you have done things to harm the person. In the church, we can have church hurt. Sometimes it's not deliberate, you know, it's unintentional. But, but because the person shared that they were hurt, they will want to pay attention to that and validate their feelings and then change. Say, I'm sorry. Three, love must be compassionate, not just passionate. You know, I like what Dr. Sternberg, um, he has this triangular theory of love. He says, you know, for love to last long, you must have passion, intimacy, and commitment. So in other words, you pick each other, right? You, you choose each other. You have passion, you have intimacy, but you have commitment. But, but, but here, the writer is saying, love is not just passionate, it must be compassionate. And compassionate means a feeling or showing sympathy and concern for others. Jesus did that. Woman at the well, Zacchaeus, tax collector, woman caught in adultery. Um, there are times that we just have to be merciful with each other because we're all going through some stuff. And none of us perfect. But, but once we get the correction, we make the changes. And that's why you must love feedback. When the leaders give you feedback, when others give you feedback, then you make the changes. How are you going to grow unless you change? You have to change. And when you change, you're going to have discomfort. There are some things that are going to be new to you. And that is why many of us, we don't change. We don't become more loving. We don't become more kind. We don't become more compassionate. Because we think that it just happened. And it can't just happen. You have to do some work. You have to be required to do some change. Second to last point. Love requires commitment. Verse 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort, brothers and sisters in this community, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. The Holy Spirit comes inside of us. And Jesus says that they will know that you are my disciples when you have love one for the other. People are looking on and, and seeing how we treat each other. And they expect us to be an example. You know, we are united even though we are different. But we are able to make every effort. So I'm going to ask, as a part of the challenge, is that you're making every effort. So if you never say good morning when you see people, you can start. That's a good one, you know, when you see people come in, just say good morning. 
and then you could say, it's so great to see you. A sister shared with me, she was in Barbados, she went to a church for nine months and not one person came and greeted her. Can you imagine that? And no, but I'm just saying, people can come through, you know, and you, you think everybody will greet them, but nobody will greet them. Because you decide since others will greet them, you're not going to greet them, and then nobody will greet them. And I'm going to ask you to, to make that change. Sometimes just, just a hello, how are you, a smile, great to see you. And, and, and that can make a big difference because we, we all want a sense of belonging. We want this community. We want to be valued as it were. So, but that requires commitment. Are we committed to walking in the spirit and we exude the love and the joy and the peace and the forbearance and the kindness and the goodness and the faithfulness and the gentleness and the self-control? So we have to be disciplined. We have to have that self-control. Finally, love thrives in community. Love thrives in community. Verse 6. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. God wants all his children to live worthy lives and victorious lives. It is God's intention that all of us. So the strength of the individual is the group and the strength of the group is the individual we, we all need each other no man is an island no man stands alone and 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 according to paul you know the person with a gift that you think might be inferior that gift is so important for you and in fact that's why you're not growing because you're not open to get that blessing from the other person you're not open to be blessed because you decide this is how I want the blessing. Like Naaman, you know, the prophet come and say, Naaman, go down by the river and dip. And Naaman say, oh, where this bread at? I say, you know much clean water? That where me come from. With all minerals and things that can heal you. And, and you are sending me in a dirty water. And, and, and I, I go where the man I go in, I I'm a commander and a big man, chief of staff. And I go in my crawl with now because he believed the prophet had dissed him. And the little servant said, Master, if the man did come out and lay all hand upon you and said big things, you know what I say, you'd have submit. And the little servant said, I'm on a God that you know, so I think so you better submit. Yeah. Sometimes, oh God, I think it's pa Pastor Mike was saying that, that, that sometimes you know, if you understand everything, you know, <laughs> you just trust God. No, man, because, why? Because God is trustworthy. There are some people that they tell you that I am not leaving you. I am promise you I will be with you. And then after some hardship come, then gone like Sammy Mouse. Them leave and gone, man. Them give another excuse. But you see, Jesus, when him say, I will never leave you, nor forsake you, let me tell you, a God a talk. God cannot lie. God promised that he's taking you through. God promised no matter what the situation that you are going through, I am with you and you are going to be an overcomer. And God cannot lie. God wants all of us to live victorious life. I end with this passage from Romans 8, 35 to 38. Paul says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all the day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither this present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is why when the enemy tried to kill you, he couldn't kill you. In the 1980s election, I was a student at Excelsior Community College. 
as living in Harbour View, took a bus and then they stopped the bus and then a whole lot of people just come in and they had knives and machete and everything. It was a volatile time. And them just pick up somebody and say, that one! And they chop him and push him through the door. And this student right beside me, I text said, them said, that one! And they chop him and push him through the door. And then them said that, and them just stabbing. It's like they're on drugs or anything like that. And, and there I am now, and I said, Jesus, I beg you, please, don't make it today. Do not make it my day today. Please, I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to protect me. And then I said, but if you don't protect me, you know, so I'm ready. No, that's a prayer, you know. But then I said, please protect me. Because I prefer you protect me. But if you don't protect me, are ready. And what seems like an hour, and then they push out people and so, and then it's a drive, drive, and everybody starts to hallelujah and ball and thing, and then the driver drive. And then I reach home. I don't tell my mother nothing. I go straight into the bed and cover up under the sheet. And 12 o'clock, we just get up. I'm man, I ball like a big woman. I, it just shake me and shake, you know, because it just dawned on me that I could have died. But you know why? Because God wanted somebody today to hear this message. God wanted you to hear this message. And, and, and so the enemy cannot willy-nilly take you out, you know. That, that's why we don't live by fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, and so if God says that you should do something, I'm going to ask you to be obedient. In fact, I'm going to ask um, us two, two, two things. If you are here, online as well as here, and you have never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and God is speaking to you, I'm going to ask you just to stand and to walk up here. You want Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life, and, and, and you get it from God, that you need to turn your life to the Lord. Surrender. I'm going to ask you to stand and to come from right here, right now. God is speaking to you. I just want you to do that in obedience. A pastor is going to be up here to guide you through the process. And anybody, just, just come. We're waiting for you. The Lord is speaking with you. You have never trusted him. You have never yielded your life to him. I'm going to ask you to walk forward. The, the second challenge is this. And, and those still the first one. I'm going to ask you to come still. But the second challenge is, if you are here as a believer and God is speaking to you and he's challenging you to grow, to grow in, in how you love each other and, and, and he's challenging you to do something different and you're saying, stand with me. As of today, I am going to make these changes, but I need you to be praying for me. I'm going to ask you to stand and to come forward. Our leaders are here. They're going to be praying with you. Just, just, just right here. There's some things God speaking to you. Just, just come forward. And it's your decision. But He's speaking with you. Anyone else? Just to walk forward to say, yes. God is speaking to me. And I am making this decision. I'm going to do some things differently. Because I want to be obedient. Thank you for coming. Anyone else? Anyone else? Please come. Uh, brethren, um, I want to just add something to the call. Uh, before Brother Kevin came up to speak, I heard the Holy Spirit saying something to me. And it is that without submission, there is no spiritual authority. I wasn't sure what, it, what the Lord wanted to do with that. Then I heard Kevin come up and talk about the need for us to submit to God. And Virgin, there is a sense as the message progressed that God wants to deal with the two things that with submission and with love in our community. And even at home, 
there is a command to love and to submit. The two things are, they go together. Jesus said that if you love me, then you will, you will submit to me, you will obey my commandments. So the, the, the things, you can't divorce one from the other. I believe God is speaking to our congregation about these two things. About the need for us to understand that, that love and submission are part of what he has joined together. We can't separate them. So I'm going to ask us as we, we, we read these scriptures. And after you read them together, if you believe that God is speaking to your heart, I'm going to ask you to come to the front also and let us pray together as a community. So I'm going to ask the AV team just to, I'm going to ask us all to stand by the way. We're going to read the word together. And we're going to read these scriptures to one another. And we're going to declare them. Um, so are we ready? Starting with 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. So let's read these scriptures to one another together. And Virgin, let's read them with intention. And let's, let's read them understanding that this is, this is the word of God. So let's start. Above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. How must we love each other? All right, let's move to the second one. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We do that because we like you? No. Out of reverence for Christ. Remember the first scripture said, If you love me, Jesus says, you will obey my commandments. So I can, it, you know, the devil is going to be telling some of us right now, me not submitting to that one. Next one. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, but that would be of no benefit to you. Virgin, I, I want to just confess something to you. On more than one occasion, I have wanted to give up leadership. For the simple reason that I can't bear the risk of the account I'm going to have to give in situations where we have problems with this. And on two occasions, at least in recent times, I have wanted to give it up because I can't handle the risk that of this. And this calls us, brethren, to understand the risk that those who lead bear. Because they're going to have to give an account. And they can't say, Lord, I was afraid. So I reasoned, reasoned to myself that it's safer for me to run. And uh, my wife said to me, is you put yourself there or is the Lord? Let's read the, the next one together. We're reading this to each other. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Is there another one? That's the last one. The last one. That's, I know, I think... Yeah. I urge you brothers and sisters to submit to such people and to everyone who joins in the work and labors at it Virgin, there are so many reasons for us to submit to one another first of all out of reverence for Christ but out of respect and a commitment to honor one another so in the church, brethren, love and submission are commandments of the Lord that are inextricably joined and we cannot separate them. 
You can't tell me that you love me if you're not willing to submit in a certain context. And so, brethren, that calls for submission. That calls for honoring. It calls for us to recognize the blood on one another. And so God is speaking to us as a community this morning to change the way we love one another and make it be based on what the Bible says. And to change the way we submit to one another and submit to him based upon what the Bible says. We're going to pray if those scriptures have tugged at your heart and God has said anything to you as he spoke to me before the message. I'm going to invite you to come because we're just going to pray together as a community. Brethren, we're just going to pray for one another as a community. And Kevin, I'm going to ask you just to pray for us. Since you are our guest, I'm going to ask you just to pray for, for us because God has used you to speak to the community. As we come, brothers and sisters, um, in submission to God first, we're just going to agree and in submitting to those that God has put over you in authority to lead you and, and their work, they have to give an account to God. Um, it's not easy. And then submit one to the other as we're all significant and valued. Hallelujah. Even though the world is in turmoil, God has placed us here to be light and life. And, and, but first we have to submit. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that we can only resist the devil when we submit to you. Father, we recognize that there is an enemy that wants to steal and to kill and to destroy our purpose, the plan that you have for us, the work that you have for us, the love that you have for us, the peace, the unity. But in the name of Jesus, as we bow before you, we declare that the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, those strongholds of disobedience, strongholds of pleasing self, strongholds of disorder, strongholds, Lord God, of arrogance and pride and self-centeredness and narcissistic behavior. Lord, we, we, we submit to your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you to, to have mercy upon us according to your loving kindness and your tender mercies. That you will blot out our transgression, Lord God. Against you, we have done evil, Lord God. Against you, we have not loved each other deeply. Against you, we have malice and, and pride and unforgiveness, Lord God. Father, as we stand, as we bow before you, we release those who have hurt us, Lord God. We release those, Lord God, that have wronged us, Lord. For unless we forgive, you cannot forgive us. And so, Lord, as a community here, we ask you, Lord God, as we submit to forgive us. Fill us with yourself, your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray that you will give a special anointing to our leaders during this time, and challenging times, and the demands of, of serving and ministry, Lord God, that they'll not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, they will reap a rich reward. If they faint not, pray in the name of Jesus, there'll be no fainting. We pray, Lord God, for, for brothers and sisters, those who are at the altar, and, and they have made a decision that there are some things I'm submitting to you, Lord. I'm surrendering to you. As of today, Lord, is a different trajectory, Lord God. As of today, we press the reset button and we're following you. Those in the audience, those online. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for, for the growth in this church, Lord. We thank you for the children and the young people and the men and the women, Lord God, who will come together, Lord God, and, and be a mighty army that will speak forth your word and give life and transformation. Thank you, Father. We agree with your word. We say it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Brethren, let's give thanks for the word this morning. Like our brother Kevin. Um, when Kevin comes, you, you have to prepare yourself to laugh, but you also have to prepare yourself to hear a serious word from the Lord. Amen? And brethren, this has been a good day. The Lord spoke to us about surrender during the worship. And it came back again in the word. 
So we really kind of get it flushy today, as we say, in Jamaica. We got full nine yards of what God wants to say to us as a, as a community. Um, I, I am going to just ask us to do one thing, brethren. Um, 